Good morning. It's wonderful to be here together. It's great to see everyone on this beautiful spring day. It's wonderful to have the warm temperatures. It's supposed to be quite lovely this afternoon. And so as we gather, we light the Christ candle to remind us of Christ, who is our light and our foundation. Let's stand and join in our intro.
grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying a stone in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're now going to join in our hymn for more voices, number 115. Behold, behold, I make all things new. Want to do it twice? Sure, we're going to sing it through twice. <laughs> together 
And just to share some background, this was sung yesterday at the coronation of King Charles III, and apparently it was also a favorite of Queen Elizabeth II. And so, Carla, we're going to invite you to stand as we sing this piece. Um, so let us join in it. Very truly I tell you, 
The one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let us pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So throughout the Easter season, the resounding theme is that of resurrection and new life. We celebrate the story of Christ's resurrection while seeking to see the signs of it in our own lives. And our reading today from 1 Peter invites us to take this theme and see it in a new way. As the letter opens, the author seeks to help move their listeners from what is to what is to imagining what could be. In other words, the purpose is in this passage is to encourage us to dream a new dream, to embrace the vision of new life that's offered to us in Christ. And so we're invited to move towards living as God's chosen people. But how do we do this? As followers of Christ, we seek to embrace the teachings of Christ each day. But here we're offered some very beautiful images to help us see what it is we're called to do and be. These images include a newborn infant, the drinking of spiritual milk, that we can taste God, that Jesus is like a cornerstone. We're given the image of living stones, a spiritual house, and finally a holy or royal priesthood. Now that's a lot of images for us to consider, and each but each have a common purpose. They invite us to continue learning about the way of Jesus while seeking to live into it as God's chosen people. And although I could ex easily explore any of them, one image stood out to me this week. The idea that we're called to let ourselves be built into a spiritual house, where we see ourselves as a home, home for Christ and his teachings to reside. So what does this mean for us? Well, let's start with the image of a house. Now, if you're going to build a house, what exactly do you need? What do we need to build a house? Lumber, Lumber yeah. Nails. Foundation, yep. Yeah. What else? Nails. Nails. Carpenters. Carpenters. Shingles. And what shingles? What do you do before you even lay anything into the ground? A plan. A plan. That's right. So we need a blueprint to guide the build, a foundation to be poured, walls, a roof to protect all that is inside. Without these key ingredients, a house just would not come together to be a safe place to reside. And so this is how we are to see Christ and our personal journey as followers of Christ. Here, Jesus is the cornerstone of our house, the foundation on which all other things are built. And so if Christ is our cornerstone, then he is the one who holds all things together, meaning that he is the one that unifies. Christ is also the one who strengthens us as we journey together and who guides us as we seek to respond to the new vision he offers to us. But returning to the image of our house, once the cornerstone is laid and all the pieces then come together, once built, light begins to enter in as the house grows and blossoms into what it's meant to be. As paint and flooring transform cement and wood, as the house begins to be more than just a structure. Just like the house, as we grow in faith and place our trust in our cornerstone, it is then that we can find ourselves being made new. Light enters in which allows us to share that light back into the world around us. Yet as we all know, the structure itself is not what makes it a home. It's not even the paint or the curtains or the tables or a couch. What makes a house a home is the feeling that's inside of it. 
It's about, about the warm and welcoming environment that's created by those who reside within. So when kindness, comfort, love, safety, and acceptance prevail, it is then that it becomes a home. And the same is true for us. In making ourselves into a spiritual house, we turn to the one who is our cornerstone for strength as we seek to grow and learn about Christ's way. But then we're called to let that wisdom grow within us so that we can become a home for Christ and for all those who we embrace along the way. Where our heart and soul is a place where love blossoms, where comfort and refuge can be found, and where safety and acceptance is lifted up. Because each of these things represent Christ's way. Throughout his ministry, Christ sought to love those he met, welcoming people that others would turn away. He comforted those who mourned, provided a place of refuge for those who were afraid, and sought to speak up about the injustices of his time. All of which are now our calling as disciples of Christ. And when we allow Christ to create these within us, it is then that we are playing our part in creating the kingdom of God here on earth. All of which then opens us up to experiencing our own rebirth, where we move from following Christ to living in his way, which is what Easter is all about. Our Easter faith is about inviting us to be transformed through Christ and through the life that he led, where we're forever changed by his life, his death, and his resurrection, and where we choose to let those changes guide us into a new way of living, a new way that we want to then share with others. And so today we're invited to open ourselves to hearing God's word anew, to hearing and seeing the ways in which Christ continues to call us as we seek to follow him. And so, I invite you to consider what your spiritual house is like. What aspects of Christ are already blossoming within you? Sometimes we may not see what's already growing, but we are reminded this day that the love of Christ is always growing. And so we're called to see what is already within and to let it shine. A house has windows so that light can shine in, but also so that light can then return to the world. Just picture for a moment that feeling when you drive home in the dark and arrive in your driveway to a light shining through your window. That light comforts us and welcomes us. And the same is true for us. When we let the light shine within for all to see, we are then creating a space of love, comfort, and welcome for those around us. And so I encourage you to see your gifts, to lift them up and let them shine. Don't be afraid to use them and to be who you are meant to be, because this is what Christ calls us to do. But as you let your light shine, take time to continue growing in faith. Make space to consider what else you might be able to offer, to consider what might be missing from your spiritual house. Perhaps there's other ways that you can continue to grow in the path of Christ. Are there new ways you can love and support others? Going back again to that image of what makes a house a home, we're called to take Christ's teachings and help them grow in the world, to create within ourselves and the world kindness, comfort, safety, acceptance, and love. And so I encourage you, to continue nurturing this. Build upon this foundation already laid out by Christ and let it grow. And as you do, remember that you are a beloved child of God, chosen and called to proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness and into marvelous light. So live into this light. Live into this light which does indeed shine upon Proclaim what you believe, share love, 
fight for justice, and be a place of safety and comfort for all. For this is what you have been called to do and be. In Christ's name. Amen. We'll join in hymn number 356 in Voices United. Seek ye first.
And I'll share first that the bulletins for May are dedicated to the glory of God and our loving memory of the following people. Angus, Eva, sons Calvin and Arnold McLennan, Greta Grigg and Heath McLennan by Ruth and family, May Hardy by the family, Mary Howitt and Wendell Gillis by Wayne and Janice Trousdale, Isabel Hutchinson and Linda Lane by Helen and Elmer Hutchinson and family. Next week we will be celebrating Mother's Day and we will be worshiping here at 10 a.m. with our service then being online around 7 in the evening. We continue to collect items for the Caring Cupboard and so there's a donation box in the entryway. The, we do have some meetings coming up and so we have session this week on Wednesday at 7 p.m. and then the following week on Monday, May the 15th is Long Range Planning. As well, coming up on June the 4th will be our Walk United fundraiser, and so that will be held following the service that Sunday, which will be here in Biddeford Conway. The service is also our closing for our Sunday School and Busy Group. If you'd like to participate in the walk, sponsor sheets are available at the back of the church, and if you're wanting to donate or sponsor someone, uh, reach out and connect with someone who is walking, or you can make a donation through the stewards or one of the treasurers. Those are the announcements I have. Are there any others? Ruth had a birthday. Thank you. I knew that from earlier, and then... So did John. <laughs> 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 so we have at least two birthdays. Are there any others that are willing to admit a birthday? <laughs> well, happy birthday, Ruth and John, and anyone else who may be secretly celebrating, so let us sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Any other announcements? Then let us continue our time of worship as we as we share our gifts and give thanks. So our, our, we'll, let us stand and join in our doxology as our offering is brought forward.
For the love of God is yours to share. The peace of Christ is yours to extend. And the power of the Holy Spirit is yours to offer. And as you go, may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>